Good morning, I'm on site here at Embedded World 2022 and joining me today is Jason from BeagleBoard and Robert from DigiKey. So before we get started, Jason, perhaps you'd like to introduce yourself? Uh, sure, I'm Jason Kreidner and I'm a founder of BeagleBoard.org and um, I sit as um, president of the board. Um, Rob's also on the, the board of directors for, for BeagleBoard.org Foundation. And so BeagleBoard.org is a community of embedded systems developers specifically Typically around Linux, right? We're really heavily dominated by Linux developers, but what's most common in our developer community is the love of open source, right? And so all of the BeagleBoard.org boards are open source hardware and run open source software. Linux, among others, but, um, um, and the foundation, BeagleBoard.org Foundation, is, exists as a 501c3 nonprofit mm -hmm. um, to support that developer community. Fantastic. And Robert, what's your role at DigiKey? So I'm an apps engineer at DigiKey, and I'm also on the board of BeagleBoard.org. I think we started this adventure, what, 12, 13 years ago, Jason? Yeah. <laughs> and day one, I bought a board, was playing around, and ever since, we've been doing Debian, and crazy, 12 years later, we're still doing it, and just hacking on boards, getting community feedback, and just building everything. That sounds fantastic, brilliant. Um, so could you give us an overview um, of BeagleBoard? I mean, you have briefly, and perhaps the BeagleBoard Foundation as well? Just tell us what that's about. Yeah, so, um, the foundation, I guess, has been around since, uh, I think we started 2014, or I don't remember. <laughs> but um, it, it exists to, to serve the community, right? So it runs the website, um, you know, it licenses the logos or the manufacturing partners. Um, but everything is done as open hardware. So and we try to make sure that the designs are such that people can actually go and get the, the components that are on the board in quantity one through distribution. Um, and actually go and make changes to it because we have a very professional developer community mm -hmm. um, that are also really care about giving back, right? They care about onboarding new people into embedded systems development, making things and going, you know, from rapid prototyping of, of ideas um, all the way through products, right? So it's a very entrepreneurial community, a community of, of experts um, and building on the shoulders of the open source giants. Mm -hmm. And on the side of that, we are focusing a lot on education, yeah. teaching people how to use it and build products with it. Yeah, that's Absolutely. fantastic. That's a very important part. So could you also give us a brief introduction to, to Beagles? You know, what main features do they have? Um, one of the, the things you'll notice on a lot of um, Beagle Bones is one of the product lines in the, the new BeagleBone AI64 um, exists within the, the BeagleBone family is the these feet, the headers, right? Yeah. So um, that are easy to plug wires into directly, but they give you a whole lot of, of general purpose um, um, I.O., right? So the ability to go and connect up to uh, different electronics. And they include um, not just you know, GPIOs, but um, analog to digital converters and a lot of smart peripherals. Um, there's um, some microcontrollers in here that a lot of people in our community care a lot about um, because it gives them kind of the best mix between high throughput Linux and ultra low latency um, in controlling IOs, right? Mm -hmm. So they, a lot of the, a lot of people build things that control real things, right? They need to respond in real time. Yeah. Um, and so even though this is a desktop Linux platform, you plug it in, it just looks like a, a, a desktop Linux computer. You can get in here and um, you know have sub microsecond control latency um, um, independent of the Linux system. Brilliant, fantastic. <laughs> and um, as you've mentioned, BeagleBoard is interested in creating sort of powerful, open, and embedded devices. And all designs are fully open source, and components are available for anyone to manufacture compatible hardware. So what main benefits does that bring, specifically the open source? A lot of times, because of that, we get a lot of support from TI. Just because of how much we're open and how much the community builds on it, we get a lot of support from TI and other manufacturers because they realize what we're doing. And it helps the, the like the kids that are coming in and learning to to have as much ability to dig into the knowledge base as much as possible, right? So there's not a limit to how deep they can go in understanding um, the hardware. They can get the, the tools and, and, and look at it. Um, and of course, for, for people building products, yeah. it matters a lot that they can take control of their own supply chain, right? So they can go and, and like they can 
work with people to make custom variations. Um, they can make the thing as it is, just don't use our logo because <laughs> that's a trademark. <laughs> but but that's, that's really the fundamental um, restriction. Otherwise, like, you know, feel free. And so for professional developers, that matters a lot that they can take it and do what they, they need. And of course, um, you know, another part of what we do at the, the foundation is to try to make sure that there's a steady supply of these for de developers and over a long period of time. You know, that's, a, that's a really important for education. Um, people develop curriculum, they need to be able to use that curriculum yeah, for 10 course. years. Yeah. And um, so we try to make sure there's long-term uh, uh, availability. And for people doing, um, you know, development work, right, they can get a hold of these later and, and still continue to kind of advance what software and systems they're creating. Yeah, so, so what hardware and software support do you offer? Uh, that's a great Rob question. <laughs> so on the software side, by default, we ship Debian. But we give all the U-boots, the kernel changes, all the other TI changes that are needed to make it fully open so anyone can use it. And so we have people port that from to Yoctl, to Buildroot, to Ubuntu. And there's always someone with Android. But, <laughs> but we, we kind of give, here's the default image. It has everything you'd ever want. It allows anyone that spin a clone board, and we can still support them so easily. Yeah. And so. We yeah, we care a lot about um, leveraging the upstream, yeah. right? So, like the the upstream first is kind of the the, the, the mantra. Um, so I know Rob pulls a lot of the patches from from both TI and um, the upstream developers in order to create the the Debian images that we we ship with the board. Um, but a lot of the fun in the the Beagle world is it's very much not just what we create, right? You talk about Android, right? It's so many other things that are coming from the community, so it goes all over the place. I mean, we have users that have created um, 3D printers with the PRUs, or they cook hamburgers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah there was a really nice article in Make about um, the world's first hamburger robot, right, that was um, built around Beagle Bones out in California. It's, um, those are fun. Yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> um, so artificial intelligence is a huge trend in the marketplace at the minute. Um, so what, what is the BeagleBone AI64, you know, and how does it meet the needs looking for those to design AI in? Yeah, I think um, better support for the common libraries that people are used to using, um, TensorFlow Lite, um, TVM, like so with you know, DLR. I mean, I'm kind of just dropping acronyms, but I yeah. think those people who are working with um, models today and running those on, on their, um, their, their laptops or wherever they're, however they're doing that, um, if it's, TVM, um, ONNX, right? They can just take either C or Python code and just use the libraries and get the acceleration that's in there. Um, and of course, those libraries, you know, Rob's packaged those things up so the firmware and the libraries are all just there and they just run. Yeah. Um, but of course, we care a lot about open source, right? So the, the C7 DSP that's running most of that stuff, there's a, a tool chain you can actually build for the C7 DSP. Um, and there's um, eight tops. I mean, the, the tops metric is definitely overblown, right? But it's the one that kind of it's people the one use. everyone marketing uses. Yeah. And, um, and so an eight tops is a as a as a pretty good chunk for um, an embedded developer board that's you know it's easy easy to use yeah. and readily available. Um, so it's, it's it brings a lot of performance and reduces latency, right? So I think that that's. Um, that's kind of one, some of the magic about this is why do you need that much AI performance? Well, if you can execute the algorithm faster, you can do the inference faster and react to it faster. Yeah, yeah that sounds fantastic. So speaking of trends like artificial intelligence, sort of what other trends are you seeing coming from the industry, particularly from the maker community? Certainly there's a lot about trying to, to in, innovative ideas on, on making things easier, um, being more connected, yeah. um, so there's a lot of, um, like w one of the nice things I like about this board is we've got an, an M.2 connector on here um, that's an e-keyed, so there's a lot of, we can get different connectivity options really easy, including cellular, yeah. right? So um, I think that um, some, of the, some of the maker trends, we, we do see some more powerful things uh, coming out. I think makers are getting more sophisticated um, and kind of the, the problems that they, they tackle, and I think this, um, you know, this this follows um, that bent. Um, but this isn't the only thing I think in the the, the Beagleboard pipeline, right? So I think we're, we're working on a number of things that kind of address 
Um, maybe maybe not as much much power, but maybe more simplicity that some makers need. Yeah, yeah. So things like the Internet of Things must be a big buzzword in your community. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Fantastic. Um, so what support do you offer makers and the design community in general? Pretty much everything in the end. I mean, we give the schematics, the board files. Yeah. We give here's all the source we use to build it. We give instructions how we build it. For the maker community, it's like we just give them everything they could possibly yeah. need to actually make the board yeah. or do whatever they want. Um, one of the things, like if, if if I give like uh, talks most of the time, I'll actually put my phone number and email address yeah. up there. Um, but my, what I always ask people is just go visit our forums first. Um, it's loaded with great experts like like Robert and many 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 others that are that are, that are probably going to give you a better answer than, than I can. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But I say put the question on the forums, wait 24 hours, and then call me, right? <laughs> um, or join or on our IRC chat. We have tons of people that have 10 years experience working on this yeah. hardware. Absolutely. It's all the thing is everyone's working on their free time, so it's they're all they have pride and joy in the product. Yeah. They enjoy working with the community. You will not get an answer. Just like go away. They'll, no, yeah. everyone's yeah. helpful. As long as you, as long as you make a legitimate effort and and say, okay, well, this is what I tried, yeah. um, and I, it didn't exactly work the way I expected it. Um, you know, you'll get something to help you move forward, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Some idea about how you can, can solve things. So, I, I I have no problem telling people to call me because. It, it, it happens like maybe once every six months, yeah. right? That somebody doesn't get a valid, you know, somehow useful answer in 24 hours on the forums that they can yeah. move ahead. Yeah. And a lot of times we rely on those users too. If they have a question or they see a problem, if they don't tell us about it, we don't know about it and we can't fix it. Good and point. so we appreciate every question, every, every answer. Every report, yeah. Because a lot of those are, oh, we made a mistake. We need yeah. to fix that. And so that way the next month when the next image is generated, like, here you go, it's yeah. all the fixes. So we incorporate all the feedback all the time. And we're fantastic. constantly improving. Yeah, brilliant. Um, so what would you say are some of the most exciting projects that the Beagle Boards have been, have been used for? And I'm eyeing that up because that looks interesting. <laughs> that's, that's a great one. So this is, um, this is a, um, I'll throw out the term donkey car, right? So okay. it's like a minimally viable um, autonomous racer, right? So um, we're, we're building this one up. It's got two um, wide angle cameras. Um, that it can use for um, you know, for vision on on the, the to, to drive around yeah. a, a, a track, right? Much safer to wreck this than a real car. If so, so if you really want to learn about autonomous driving yeah. and all the perils that it may provide, let's let's start with something this size. And um, um, we've got ultrasonic sensors built around it. Um, there's a sub gigahertz wireless network that you could use to communicate it remotely. Um, but this has a, a BeagleBone AI64 and an upcoming robotics cape that we're working on in here to do the motor drive and turn the wheels. Um, there's also um, inertial measurement unit, which is like this thing that helps you kind of um, figure out how fast you're moving, which way you're turning, mm -hmm. um, in addition to um, quadrature encoder inputs, right? So you can actually tell that the wheels, and if you've, if, if you haven't played with one of things, that that's a really pretty unique feature. Yeah. Um, is that it can actually tell not just like how strong it's pushing, but how far it's actually gone. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we're working with our community to build software so that people can quickly start driving these things around um, and learning about um, about AI algorithms. Yeah, brilliant. And, and going back to sort of the education aspect that you mentioned, you know. For the younger generation to see a project like this must be really inspiring. For yeah, and, and watching kids watch these things yeah. zip around on the, the like they, they get pretty excited because yeah. um, this thing goes pretty fast. It's like 10 meters a second. Wow. Okay. So um, it's zipping yeah. around the track, <laughs> and um, the, to see their eyes light up and to see what you can possibly do with engineering, yeah. Um, that 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 is something that motivates everybody involved in Beagle. Yeah. Fantastic. I love it. Um, so can you tell us about the history that you have with DigiKey and sort of how the current relationship benefits end user? So the, 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 the initial relationship with, with DigiKey, right? So DigiKey was a big part of BeagleBoard starting, yeah. right? So the very first BeagleBoard, um, Gerald and I had made like five prototypes of a, of a board and we brought it to DigiKey and you know, they bought 10,000 of them um, based on how much they, they loved the idea. Yeah. And that, that actually birthed BeagleBoard, right? So, so DigiKey has been involved with BeagleBoard from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fantastic. 
And what about from your perspective? You know, how I'm, exciting is it to work with BeagleBoard? It's always been exciting. Yeah. I mean, like the first day, I had no idea this background idea was going in the, uh, the heads of DigiKeep. I just, oh, well, we launched it today. I'm going to buy it. And I bought it and started playing around with it. And then, yeah, it's grown ever since. We so many exciting products, so many developers we've met. Yeah. Just continue to grow up, continue with ideas, and let's try this, and let's make a product with this. And yeah. It's yeah. been an awesome relationship between. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for your insights today, both. And I look forward to seeing what other exciting applications come out in the future. Thanks, Paige. <laughs> thank you very much. Thanks, Paige.